So today I thought I would do a quick tour of my sewing library. I haven't had time to sew much, so I thought I would do this as a quick video and then give an update on what I had been working on, which is this Bogue jacket. And you can't really tell on camera, but this is an olive kind of tweed with um, like a light pale yellow and little bits of red and yellow and blue in, in it. It's a really nice fabric. I just have to put a sleeve on. I need to line it. We've got some patch pockets here. This trim will be all around here. And then it closes with a little ribbon. But that's what I've been working on and as soon as I'm done, I will do a video on it. But until then, since I haven't posted anything in a while, I thought we could just go through my library. Here I have an old McCall's magazine that I got on eBay. It's from 1908. I really like Edwardian and Victorian fashion, so I had to get this. And this is a book that I got from this exhibit in London I went to in September. But since it's not really a sewing book, we won't go over that. So the top row are my sewing books. The bottom row are my books from grad school. So that's probably of no interest to you. So let's just go through here. We'll start at the first cubby hole. When, I don't know if this is necessarily considered a sewing book. I mean, obviously if you sew, you'd probably look at this, but um, I really like this period. Well, 1660 to 1860, so it's quite a few periods in here, but these are different patterns and fashion plates for these time periods listed. And I, I really haven't delved into how you would actually use these patterns. I got it mostly to see how things were constructed. Um, because I specifically like to make costumes in the 1800s, like 1840s, 1850s when I do the Charles Dickens Christmas Fair with my cousins. Um, but I didn't do it last year, so I'm hoping this year I can get to work on it. But I thought this was really interesting, so I ordered it, but I haven't really used it, if that makes sense. So, also in this cubby hole, I have some books on makeup. Um, this is a fashion book, a fashion sketching book tells you how to draw um, like different folds and creases of fabric, how to draw feet, I mean all kinds of body parts and illustrate clothing. I and oh these are like flat patterns or different types of shirts. It's really useful. I actually have this book because I have a degree in fashion design. I dabbled a little bit in it. This was back in 2000, no. Yeah, it was 2000. But I didn't like it for a career. And so I didn't really pursue it. I changed courses and went into neuroscience. So a really big, a really big difference. But so I still have some books, and you'll see, from fashion school. And in fashion school, we didn't have to sew a lot. It wasn't something that was really required. I mean, we had to sew a little bit, but it wasn't something that we spent a huge amount of time on because the average fashion designer doesn't actually sew. They have sample makers, but they do sketch a lot and they draw f flat patterns. So that is something we did. We also did pattern drafting, but by then I wasn't really interested in it and I wish I had paid more attention. But so now sewing in fashion is more of a hobby. So these are more books from drawing from school. So I won't get into those, but if 
for some reason you want me to, I can do a separate video. We'll skip my, my makeup books. I have this, which is something I bought to get inspiration from for the 1920s. So for Arte, we'll just pop in a little bit, just so you can see. I really like the 20s, and I thought for some inspiration this book would be great, especially because I want to make a dress for this big Gatsby party, and thought this would come in handy. So let's move on. We have a book, Let There Be Clothes, so it's kind of like a cute history book on um, clothes and fashion. So here, let's move it to the... This talks about... It goes all the way back and, and what fibers they used and materials they used and why they wore what they wore, things like that. I, I like books like this. I think my grandmother bought me this for Christmas one year. I have another fashion illustration book, another book about um, historical costumes, and this is a fashion plate book. I really love fashion plate books. We have a book on Victorian costuming because, as I said, I like that period. Here is a book on authentic Victorian dressmaking techniques. So clearly this is someone with a lot of time because it really focuses on hand stitching, which I'm afraid of, which will take us to... Actually, let's pull this out. This recently ordered a new book because I'm afraid of hand sewing. And it's called The Geometry of Hand Sewing by Natalie Channon. I guess she owns something called the Alabama Channon School or the Maker School. So I just got this, so I'm kind of briefly thumb through it, but I think if you want to learn more about hand stitching and sewing, this does seem like a good book. So I'm excited about it. So that's my newest one. It came just a couple of days ago. We'll skip this one because this was me thinking I wanted to do needle felt and didn't go so well. I think I want to try block printing at some point. And so she is Jen Hewitt. She is a really cool artist and she makes really nice block prints and this book tells you how to do it. So I'm saving that for the future. Another book on fashion, another dictionary on fashion, another book on a fashion designer I liked. And, oh, here's a book. I bought this online thinking, I don't know, somehow made a mistake. I thought that I was buying this the home and, Better Home and Gardens book on sewing like garments, but somehow I ended up with this one for your home, and I don't do any home sewing because I think that's boring. So now we're moving into some books that I actually used when I was going to fashion school and it includes, these are heavy duty I swear. There, there. How to draft basic patterns. I mean this is like from scratch drafting patterns which is great information. I just don't have the time to to get into this but I think it's super cool and maybe one day I will again this is designing apparel through the flat pattern so doing it two-dimensionally to make a three-dimensional garment it's pretty cool if you think about it so you can just imagine I mean it's definitely got some great information it's just you know it's it's a textbook so Gotta spend time with it. This one is another pattern making book from school. Same kind of thing. I think I liked this one more than this one when I was going through school, but I, I'm sure there's updated editions, obviously. This was so long ago, almost 20 years ago, that I had this book, but I don't really reference these at the moment because I don't do any of that hardcore stuff, but these two I do. These are great, so I think it's really important to really learn d about different fabrics, how they handle, how they feel, how to work with them. 
I bought this one first. It's the actual swatch book. It has real swatches. They're not dyed or anything, so each page there's so for instance we have focus like silk jersey with elastane cotton with elastane I like that it has mixes like adding elastane or things like that and it's not just all cotton or all silk or something because nowadays things are blended but it's nice because think about that you have a pattern and it calls for certain fabrics, but you don't have that. Well, you can just go to your book and feel, and then you can go online or to the fabric store and look for that kind of fabric. So at least you have an idea. These are actually dyed. These are wool, like wool suitings. So this book is, I really recommend it if you're wanting to learn more about fabrics. Definitely get this one because I think the most important thing is just feeling the fabric. That's one reason why I do these swatch clubs because, you know, the newer technology and new blends of fabrics come out and fabrics with new blends. So I think it's important to be able to feel those and know how, how they're going to wear. So definitely get this book. See, there's just all kinds of things and it does talk about like there's a little snippet like cotton velvet and you read about it and you come over here and you feel cotton velvet it's really cool but there's this companion to it so this is more of a the text more in-depth text to that and there's a color wheel this is great definitely took color theory in fashion school but this one goes more in depth on the different and well, the fibers that make up the fabric. So you have like Icelandic wool, different kinds of wool. See, this gets into way more information about what's really available. So I like this book. I think though in terms of like texts on fabric, uh, I would probably maybe, I could skip this one. I would still get the, this pink swatch book, but you could, if, if I could only choose one book on fabric, probably be something different like one of these guys. Like, more fabrics have and the reason being is because it talks more about how to actually work with the fabric because that's what we're doing here so for instance talk about rayon jersey it talks about pre-shrinking the layout how to mark it the best way to cut it what interfacing to use the types of needles, threads, how you should press it, stitch length, what the presser foot, hemming, closures, all that good stuff. That's what's important to me as I'm sewing, is knowing the best way to construct it. So this book I really recommend and you can get it like at half price books or Amazon used or you can buy it new. I think there's a newer version actually out. But it's so worth it because, I mean, look, here, this is what needle to use. I don't even know what Viella is or whatever. Let's take a look. It's 50% wool and 50% cotton. Didn't know that. And it tells you what it's suitable for. So this book, you want to learn about fabric, get this one. There's some information on different types of seams here in the back. So yeah, I like this one a lot. I These two so far, we're going to have a little must-have pile. Let's do that, sorry. And there it goes. Here's another one which I think is pretty good. It's got the same type of information. You know, um... 
like top stitching, seams, buttonholes. I think it probably gives a little bit more information than the book I just talked about. But, so I'm gonna put it in the must have pile. I think sometimes you can never have too many books though. This one's by Claire Schaefer. She has quite a few sewing books. I think I might have another one coming up from her. So we have that one. Then we've got the one by Sandra Betzina. And then we have this one by Clive what is that? Hallett and Amanda Johnson. So, so far those are in our must have pile. There's two more books I have on fabric. This is the mood guide. Love mood not so happy with this book. I mean, I think it's lacking information. Sure, it gives you a picture, has a couple of paragraphs, and it moves on. Totally pass on this book. Sorry, Mood. This one is probably more science-y out of the bunch. It really talks about, there, there's a lot of information at the beginning about how fibers are created, especially the um, synthetic ones and semi-synthetic. And then you have the information on the fabric looks like this. But this does give like the strengths and the weaknesses, but what, Oh, and another thing, it kind of puts it in the context of for a designer, which makes sense because it's the tech, the fashion designer's textile directory. So it makes sense. But for the, the other two books over there, I think they're more suitable for us home sewers. Oh, I did have this other book that I am forgot. This is a fashion draping book. I remember this book in school. I was terrified of draping at first. It's really cool um, if you want to make basic blocks on your dress form. It tells you how to do that. Let's move on to these. Oh, there's the other Claire Schaefer book right here, Couture Sewing. So if you want to take your sewing to the next level, you've got the time to do some hand finishing. This is a really good book. Claire Schaefer is awesome. I mean, look at that. It's like, just, just doing, you know, going the extra mile and doing some special finishing and just making it look that much more posh, if you will. I will put this in the recommended pile. Let's do a recommended pile in the must-have pile, shall we? This is pretty cool. I think this is a fun book to look at. I don't know if it's necessarily one that I'm going to use because I'm gonna be honest, I don't have time to go and embellish my makes. I barely have time to do makes as it is, so. But I think if I ever find time, this might be fun to look at. I, but like I said, I like to collect books and look at them. I may not actually apply the knowledge within but if you're interested in embellishment, I would pick this up. But for me, I'm just going to put it to the side here. And, all right, sorry. To so the art of manipulating fabric. I don't know what I thought when I bought this book, honestly. It's really cool, but this is honestly like, more like sculpting with your fabric. This is getting like haute couture, avant-garde runway stuff. Like, so if you wanna have some fun and be super creative and sculptural with your fabric, go for it. This isn't a book I'm going to say, hey, you like to do some home sewing, get this book. Um, yeah, I think it's cool, but I, don't think I'm gonna recommend it for my sewing channel. I have my Vogue, cat, uh, Vogue Fabrics catalog falling back here. My cat, I'm sure, pushed it back here. Here's a really cute book that I haven't delved into in terms of like opening the patterns it comes with, but it provides different bodices and different skirts so you can mix and match and create dozens of different dresses. And she goes in a little bit in depth and tells you how to construct the garments too. 
like doing a lining, which is very useful. And it does come with patterns, like I said, here in this envelope, which I haven't taken mine out. Let's see, how many patterns? So it says more than 200 dresses in one book. I'm trying to see if it shows how many patterns are in here. It doesn't, but I mean, if you can get 200 dresses out of this book, then clearly it's worth it. So. I think this is a cute book to have. I'll put it in the recommended pile, even though I haven't used it, but I can tell it's, it's going to be a good one. Let's move my dress form out of the way. So these are my magazines. Keep them in here, but I'm running out of room. Let's go into this little book I got at a um, little market in London at a train station. Just because I wanted something to read. And I like just learning how people put in zips or what techniques they use for let's say snaps or whatever because there's different ways to achieve the same thing and not one way is the right way you might find a way you like better so I always like to pick up like magazines or books and just see if there's different ways of doing things this was cute so it's not, I don't know if it's necessarily a book or a periodical so We'll put that to the side. Now let's pull out our fitting books, shall we? So this one is a recent purchase, actually. Maybe a couple weeks, well, more like within the last month. And I've just gone through it. And this is about the Palmer Pletch Complete Guide to Fitting. So it's those patterns where you pin it to yourself and fit it that way before you cut into the fabric. Um, I have a few of those patterns, but I haven't actually made anything with it. But just looking through this book, you can really understand fitting even if you didn't use that type of pattern. I think there's a lot of good information in this book. And I, this is going to be one that I would definitely want in my pile. here making a map of your body sleeves of course it's helpful if you have someone to help you with this but yeah I'm gonna put that and get the must pile this is a good one this is like the um, pivot and slide method this works for some people it's um, it's a method where you make it smaller or you make it bigger by like putting a pin at certain points of the on the pattern, sorry, focus, and then pivoting. So for instance, draw the line, pivot, and then draw the line to resize patterns. And in order to size with the Nancy Zeman method, who used to do the sewing with Nancy show, she has you buy patterns based on, you know, do the measurement from your cre your underarm crease to your underarm crease, like, see right there? And then buying the pattern accordingly. Sorry, this is a more accurate description. And then she's got a chart based on that measurement of what you should buy. And then you would do the pivot and slide method everywhere else to... Um, change it if you need it and the pivot and slide method is actually very easy it's just I don't think this method necessarily works for everyone that's just not everything works for everyone right so some people like it some people don't I I do like this book I think you know if you can find it used check it out see if this method works for you why not then we have the sewing how to use adapt and design sewing patterns book so this is a pretty decent book it's got a lot of good information like dart manipulation creating your own pattern okay preparing a commercial pattern measurement charts how to take measurements i have a 
different fitting book and I just realized that it's in a different room so I have to go get it but um this one I mean it's a good book and personally I think if you buy a few fitting books you're going to find techniques that work for you so it might be worth investing in a few different ones to see which methods are best but this one's actually, I've seen this recommended quite a lot, so I think this is one I would say, yeah, I get it, see if these methods work for you, but I have to show the other one that I have, and I will pause here in a minute to go get it, but this is a pretty decent book, and I'll put it in the recommend pile, and this is from Kenneth King, who does some tutorials, he's often in Threads Magazine, he does tutorials on Craftsy, which is now Blueprint. He has quite some fitting methods in here. And like pinning out wrinkles, you know, finding where the wrinkle leads to figure out what you actually need to do to make something fit. There's a lot of information in there. Again, he's got his own techniques and it's worth looking into. It's a pretty decent book. Kenneth King is awesome. So I can't not recommend it. So I'm just going to pause this and go find those other two books, and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I just got these back from the hotel. I was on a business trip. I brought these to read, and I left them at the hotel. It's the first time I've done anything like that, and I just got them back yesterday. So here they are. This one I'm definitely going to recommend. It is also recommended by many other home sewers and you know other people that just make garments so I think it's an excellent book in terms of showing you step-by-step -step pictures of how to fit garments how to fit muslins so if you're going to get just one fitting book I would say get this one so I guess I'm gonna put it in the must get book but yeah it's I, the great thing about this is there's so many photos in this book and they really show you how to approach the problem, how to solve it. I like that look, sitting on a skirt, what to do with the pattern. It's an awesome book. You have to get it. It's going in the must have pile. And then we have pattern making for a perfect fit. So this one is actually about using an existing clothing and like there's it's called the rub off technique so you're basically kind of tracing in a way your existing clothing to make a pattern and you can do it by there's two different ways you can um, put fabric over the garment and kind of trace the seams onto like a piece of muslin or you can go and pin certain points of the fabric so you can get the, um, the silhouette and the dark placement. So I'm trying to find a picture of what that looks like. I hope that makes sense what I said, but oh, where is it? There's one in there. So this one isn't really about pattern fitting it's about copy like knocking off your clothes that actually you know might already fit you and then making more patterns so I think it's a great idea and there's a few dresses that I have that I would like to do that with and I think it's actually a good idea for a video and if you agree let me know in the comments below that maybe I'll take one of my dresses and sort of film it and show you how to do it using this book I'm trying to find a good picture but that's the thing though I feel like there could be more pictures I'm sure there's more YouTube videos on on doing something like this so I'm gonna do an experiment and I'm going to get one of my dresses and we're gonna try to recreate it maybe using some of these techniques maybe not I don't know that's what this book is about it's not like fitting patterns it's about basically knocking off your own clothes. I'll put this in a recommended pile because that might be something you're interested in, but I don't think it should be in a must. 
So these books we have left are mostly about technique. And this one is absolutely going to be in the recommended pile because it is an awesome book on tailoring. And if you want to make a professional jacket or coat, talk, you got to get this book. I mean, it goes into detail about fitting and what interfaces to you interfacing to use, interlining. It is a great, great book. Tailoring hems, welt pockets. Yeah, this is the recommended pile. I will link all of the books below. I'll have the must have pile. Sorry, that's must have not recommended. And then my recommended pile. And then you can check them out for yourself if you want. Here I have the serger handbook because I'm just like maybe a year ago started to actually use my serger because I was terrified of it and I bought this book for some reason I'm not that impressed with it I don't know maybe I don't know what it is I can't really tell you why I'm not totally excited about this book um, so if you have a serger book that you like let me know I don't know, I feel like it's lacking, but I don't know what it's lacking. Maybe as I use my serger more, I might be able to tell you, but. So if you have a serger book you like, let me know. Then we have Power Sewing. It's just another Sandra Betsina book. She has power sewing videos somewhere on the internet. I don't know where they are again. I forgot there was a way to subscribe to them and I, I kind of like them. They're kind of, interesting little videos but I think this is a pretty decent book um, if you, like I said if you can afford to get different books uh, with different techniques I mean why not like I said you'll find something a technique that works for you better or maybe not but I like these I like to just see about like seams and knit lining and just different things and not all books have all of the same techniques or other things you know they just they all offer something different for the most part so that's why I like to look at them and we've been joined by our friend okay this is a pretty decent book I I think I would recommend it I don't know if you must have but if you like to buy books, try to find it used. I think I bought this one used. Half price priced books is a really good place. And I bought this one when I was at Liberty in London and I just had to have it because just, I just liked it. I probably just liked the look of the book. But I think there were a couple of tasks that I thought were interesting how they did it. I don't really remember what they are at the moment, but I bought it mainly because I just like the look of it. It kind of tells you how to make your tailor's hand, but honestly, I'm not going to spend my time making a tailor's hand. Just nine bucks on Amazon or Joanne, you're good. See? See, I like this kind of stuff. Hand finished hems, and it tells you how to stitch. Because I've, like I've said before, I'm terrified of hand stitching. Why? Why am I terrified of it? Interfacing. Understanding patterns. It's a very cute book. It's not necessary. I do recommend it though. It's just not necessary. This one is Clothing Constructions Pleat Guide. So I think I liked this book because there's a lot of photos and I'm all about photos. If you're trying to learn how to do something, Visual representation is a must. I mean, that I definitely recommend the Craftsy videos, which, again, Craftsy is becoming blueprint. Get a subscription. It's awesome. I should list some of my favorite videos somewhere. Let's see how to sew with zippers. I hate zippers. They're so mean to me. So this one is good. I like this one. This is worth it. Find it used. Sewing princess seams and French darts and the usual 
let's be honest, of the usual stuff. But it's good. It's not crappy. And this one is good. I really like this one. It's got so much, so many techniques. Belt buckles, fat, the fabric belt buckles are cool. I would put, probably put this one in my must pile. And then we have this one, which I got and I haven't really gone into yet because this is for sewing with knits and I haven't sewn with knits yet, but I bought it because I'm planning to and Tilly and the Buttons is pretty well known. She was on the Great British Sewing Bee, Tilly, and now she kind of became a blogger and she's just awesome and cute and I think there's patterns. Yeah, there's patterns in this book too. That is cute. This hoodie's cute. I mean, so far from what I've seen in this book, I really like it. I mean, tips and tricks, just how to handle and sew knits. A little bit on sergers. I mean, and she does talk about um, how to sew the knits if you don't have a serger, because you don't have to have a serger to sew knits. So don't let that stop you. This is good. I'm going to put it in my must-have pile, even though I haven't made anything of, from it. But I, I would definitely buy it. So I have this really old book, and it's from forever ago. But it has, like, in-depth descriptions on all kinds of techniques. It's mostly text, so it may not be for everybody, but somewhere along the line, I read that this was like the handbook for sewing, so I picked it up and oh, I don't have the patience to read through all these words. I need more pictures. Yeah. But I think it's got a lot of information if you don't mind reading. <laughs> I, I just need more pictures. So, yep. This is my sewing collection, my sewing library. I will list my pile of must-haves for all these guys right here. And then I'll list my pile of further recommendations. And you can... Um, Pick what you want and let me know. Hey, if you recommend a book and I don't have it here, let me know because I'll probably buy it right away because I'm crazy like that. Oliver, do you want to say bye to everybody? No, you don't. Yeah, say bye. Thanks for watching.